Um, I gotta get these shocks off anyway because we're gonna do these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop the shocks off the top real quick and probably on the bottom just get them off the truck and then I might work on exposing the gear. Typically if I'm just gonna do this right from a brand new truck, I'm going to probably do something like this where I'm just gonna pop the top of this off and then turn the truck upside down and, and let it drain. It's just easier and I don't really need to get into you know the whole thing. I mean, unless I'm taking the shocks off and cleaning them like I will be today. It saves a little bit of time. So they all still feel they feel better off the truck. It really doesn't seem to be any oil leakage like I thought. I mean, this could have been from mud. I mean, it definitely seems like it had maybe a little bit of seepage, but we'll find out when we pop the tops. It looks like maybe only the one screw that holds this whole assembly on. Find out. Okay, so you're going to take the bumper off. Now, it exposes this screw right here. All right, set so pieces off. Curious, this would work when the Terramoto looks to have the same piece here. Seems like it's this that's different, which would be basically replacing the buffer guard. So that's um, something interesting that I might might try out. All right, so I, I went ahead and grabbed the Terramoto Ten body post real quick just because I wanted to get a real visual on this so it, it looks guys like this will work on a Terramoto 10 now I'm not sure how the bumper alignment's going to go and things like that but just for me popping that on you know my body on these front posts I can tell you that this is about the same just just because of the way my body was sitting so you know it's not going to be off but that that's a good plus for people that don't want to go out and buy the t-bones or don't you know don't want to spend extra money on that which these are a little bit cheaper obviously but uh, you know i don't even know the prices of these but they're probably definitely still cheaper than t-bones they're not going to be as tough as a t-bone but you know again it's still another option to at least for the rears man for you know people that don't want to get it man this is a much better system for the rear holding on like this than that, that uh buffer guard system which the buffer attaches to this and then you attach um the bumper to that so this this won't even this won't even hook up right right now to this because it wants the nipples to be on top like that and that's because that's where the buffer sits and this goes in between like this so far better design and of course that's where the problem comes in it's because now you have plastic under here that's not even a direct screw all the way through it's just it's a horrible design but that actually looks like it will work the only thing I would have to do to make that work is and you probably wouldn't even have to um no you wouldn't you wouldn't have to remove it you just wouldn't be able to use it you know i, I don't know where this is going to come at on the mt or the terramoto 10 but that might have to be cut off with the dremel real quick but it may also be able to go on there without being touched so same exact post other than that also one thing it will give you i use the the shocks I use, which are similar to these, this gives you a different shock style mount as well. So as you can see, this has got that little little T-bar thing that comes off, um, just that little tiny shock plate. This doesn't even need it, so it's built in right there. So I'll be honest with you, I'd be shocked if I don't see this in a revision of the Terramoto, just because why would they want to make such similar parts when they could just 
utilize that because I know that would work as well with the other one so but again that's here and there it's not about this video um, I just like to show little tidbits of that kind of stuff for other guys who own multiple trucks and you know it, it's a good thing to know if, if you want to pick up something to fix a problem all right so we're gonna have to remove at least these two screws here as well and that's going to release this back piece Probably gonna have to get all four of these out, six total. And it looks like this screw here also has to come out. All right. All right, so I know from the T10, this kind of like holds it all on. Okay, so this piece just comes down. Okay, and it is right there. And that is going to be a three millimeter. Should just kind of open up. This is another screw I'm missing. Ah, these arm pins might have to come out. Oh, yep. Wait a minute. Oh man. Okay. So these two got to go, which are just the um, toe. Which I do need to adjust. I did notice when I was driving it. Alright, so we gotta get these off. Looks like it's just on the one side. The opposite side that the one on this side was on. So I only really had to remove one of those, but... Here we got our bevel. It's got a little bit of grease in there. I mean, there's not a ton of grease in this case, so I might put some more grease back in these. Um, I mean, there's enough on there, but not for the way this thing's going to be ran. And very, just very easy turning here. Which, again, uh, you know, might be good for certain applications, but not for what I want it for. I'm gonna compare. I want to compare this to the earthquake diff while I have it out. All right, so as I thought, it's the exact same, kind of like the center diff. Looks like the exact same differential. Again, I'm not going to count the teeth. No big deal on the bevel. Everything is exactly the same except for the drive cups. So these drive cups are deeper. So this, uh, that's about the only thing I know that's different is the drive cups. So everything else looks the same. So uh, that's probably why, same thing with like the shredder things. That's probably why some of these parts having different numbers because even though they are like the same gears and things if you need to rebuild one they just have different drive cups so as long as your drive cups are good and you need to rebuild one you know you'd be able to rebuild the inside or, you know maybe even use the same bevel gear uh, spur gear things like that just because they have a different number doesn't always mean it's not the same part in some way I like the center. I mean, there's barely anything in this. I mean, I didn't really, definitely didn't put a lot in it. That's for sure. If it's got something in it at all. Now, I'll probably take these out this time. I didn't really do it on the center. I mean, that center, man, you're putting 200K in it, and it really doesn't matter, man. That thing's going to going to be locked anyway pretty much you know but still give you that slipped all right so got those out I mean there's really no grease in here of course you know the one that had grease in it, I didn't take apart all the way and then I go to take this one out and there's barely nothing in there I mean literally barely <laughs> oh my goodness all right so 
you know, there you go, guys. There's not much in these. So, you know, what, what I just did is something that you might want to do if you own this truck to, you know, preventive maintenance. You know, just make sure your gears, you know, that's how these gears, friction and things are going to tear this thing up, especially with it being so, so loose where it turns so freely. I mean, I'm barely, again, I'm barely, I could turn it with my fingernail if I wanted to. Um, it's barely anything there. And again, of course, I'm not meshing on the gears, but it was pretty much like that a minute ago, too. Um, it's a bad example, yeah. It's not hooked up to anything. <laughs> but anyway, um, even when it was on there, which doesn't matter because the gears aren't in here, it it definitely had um, a smoother, you know, less resistant motion. And when you're turning, you know, you know you're going to turn right. You know, this wheel and this wheel is turning a little bit less, you know what I mean? different different ratios so it's good to have a little bit of slip there you know you, you put this too much of this oil in here like if you go anything more like a hundred you know, hundreds even pushing it to a degree uh, but you can go any more than a hundred on your front end and you're not going to have the wheels having as much uh, slip on each side you know positive traction so that's that's something you want to think about um, I think I'm going to stick around like 50 or 60 probably for the front and rear for this truck just to see how it is uh, I've always done like 80 and 50 80 60 I, I just haven't been sure what I want to do but that's that's pretty much what I'm going to do mainly because um, I don't have a ton of 50 left and you know there's only a little bit of difference between 50 and 60 so I want to save that 50 for my smaller truck Oops. but I am going to go ahead and put a little bit of this in now uh, which helps and you'll see this stuff comes out so much easier than that other stuff So I'll put a little bit in there now. I'm going to let it set just a little bit, and then I'm going to put my spider gears on top of it. And then I'll put a little bit more on. Alright, it's had plenty of time to set now. So I'm going to put my gears back in. It's got a, of course, I, you know, I assume people know how to do this. It's got a flat spot. Make sure that's face up. All right, now I'm going to put a little more on there. All right, now we wait again. All right, now we're ready for this one. Drop it right down in there. Again, it's got a flat spot. Try to get the flat spot lined up with the other one. If you don't, you will not have a good alignment. Now I'm gonna try to get this to go around a little bit here. Make it pretty sloppy if I put that on. Just want to kind of get it flowing through the gears a little bit. Just to make sure A, we got it meshed properly and that it is sitting down right. If it wasn't, it wouldn't be doing that right now. It would be turning one of these two and the other would be kind of like skipping or hesitating. So it tells me we got it good. careful also I just want to look there is a gasket on there so when you take that off a lot of times if there's really sticky oil in there which hasn't been a problem with these you'll start to pull that gasket off just be careful because if you ruin that gasket you got to get another one because it'll just seep out if not All right, again we'll let that settle Give it about I mean it's only it's only 60k but I'm still gonna give it about five minutes all right well it's been about four minutes I mean close enough probably but it's nice and flat I give it one more little turn just to make sure that's at a good fill height right there man that's kind of hard to tell but it's right up against not completely up against the top just enough so that when I set this gear down in there and it smushes that it'll it should leave me enough room to 
put that down. I know I'm going to get some seepage as I screw it down, but that's fine. Alright, so you really got to find those screw holes, which are kind of in the dark. It's got much more of a stiffer control, so I mean, it'll still give you that slip. I mean, this 60 is not much, I mean, in comparison, but it's enough to do the job and it's enough to make sure that your gears, I mean, it's, this thing's packed in there right now, so even if it is kicking back and left and right, spinning a lot and, and turning and using the spider gears, the friction isn't going to destroy the gears as quickly as it would have if we left it like it was, so... Uh, this should elongate the life of the diff, no matter what, but um, again, there's always, you know, when you wreck and you can always damage the bevel or, or the pinion and things like that, so there's not really much you can do about that. It's got nothing to do with the oils on the inside. Alright, so you just put your dog bone in while you're sliding this in. And give it a push. Now it's in. It almost like clicked in there too. So it sits in there pretty well. All right, that one's done. And um, oh, I gotta find my grease. All right, well that's a little frustrating. I cannot find my tube of grease. So I guess I'm going to do without for now. I'll have to open this thing back up again, which again, it's not a pain in the ass. I mean, I, I like to open them up and clean them anyway. You know, every every so often runs when I get time. So it's not the end of the world. I mean, I'll, it's got a little bit of the stock grease still on that. I wiped off most of it, but I didn't touch this, so it's still got some grease on there. It's just not packed the way I would pack it, um, but I'll handle that. Uh, I'll get some more grease or I'll find my bottle and... I know it'll turn up as soon as I'm done this. Um, <laughs> just wasn't really thinking about that at all. I, you know, had all my other oils out except for that. All right. Well, either way, I'm not going to worry about that right now. I mean, I mean, definitely get some grease in there. You know, this is, you know, while the inside of this gear is only turning when you know the wheels are going at different directions or different speeds, this is turning every time the vehicle is moving. So, this little metal gear is rubbing right up against that you know bevel the whole time it's spinning which again I'm, I'm not dropping knowledge on anybody here most people know that but my point is if anything you need more of a friction reducer right here than you would on the inside so that's why I like to do that but I mean, you can see that's dry as can be right there I mean again it's on the opposite side of the diff but it is what it is man uh, nothing I can do about it right now All right, so again, you want to make sure your dog bone is in. All right, we're going to put two screws back in. All right, and we got the whole rear pretty much back together. All we got to do is pop it back onto the chassis. Uh, probably won't attach it yet, just so I can, you know, since it's already off, it's just going to be easier to put the whole center diff in and not have to worry about the dog bones and things like that without this being in the way. 
so I'll probably rebuild it center diff and then this so this piece is done I'm going to do the same exact thing to the front you know again it's it's pretty cut and dry it's exact same setup it's just reversed uh, of course you just disconnect the steering link here which is on the servo saver you disconnect this and you know take it off from there so I, I may fast forward and show it and stop it if I need to if, if there's something different but just by looking at it right now it's the exact same thing and you're not going to have any issue except for the difference of the skid coming up in the front which is basically the same setup as taking this piece off so either way I think we're good to go and we'll put this off to the side and it's ready to go I did miss one screw which I just saw it it's when it goes back into the third third bar on this Oh, third hole. Plastic and plastic, it's pretty good down there. Rear done. This one's got to come out still too. Alright, so I am going to go with the front Terramoto uh, a scale bumper oval for the again just for the front uh, you know the, the rear hasn't been a problem I think the wheels are big enough that it's covering the rear and giving it that uh, little extra protection to keep that from snapping off like it did on the Terramoto 10 but the front you know even though it took a beast of a hit and I'm sure you know I probably might do some damage I, I really looked at it I don't know where I could do any damage at you know it's Going to, it's going to go right in there. Maybe I could snap it off right there and have to get a new piece. But if I do, if I do that one time, I'll know and I'll put my other piece back on. Uh, or I'll have the T-bones by then, one way or the other. No big deal to me. Okay, so the front does not have that screw that's down on the side of the arm don't know why and they are labeled clearly I guess for the different front and rear but it doesn't have that so we don't need to worry about that one it's a little bit better grease than this one not much, not much at all but enough that I don't want to mess it up And I'm not going to try to wipe as much as I can knowing that I don't have any more grease to put in it. Alright, so I got the front end all back together now. It's, it's ready to go back on the truck. Just going to set it off to the side and work on the shocks and get those ready. And then we'll, we'll get the whole truck back together. Get that center diff back in and, and check it out and put the bigger pinion on go from there but it was you know I fast forwarded most of this I you know I didn't record it after the diff gear just because other than that one screw difference on this which is the exact same screw the one that wasn't there isn't that's the only thing it's not like there's an additional screw everything else was exactly the same as the front so uh, with the exception of this which again just goes on there and sits on so and that it does um, being on this truck right now 
it's got a very solid feeling so and this doesn't look like there's anything there it can break because it goes right up against the back of this i think that could even flex if it had to all the way to this plate but it's you know i won't want to have to push that but it makes me definitely feel good about having this on here and i never had an issue with having this on the front of the terramoto 10 even as flexible as that was it took a bunch of beatings and my buffer guards held it was always the rear for the terramoto 10 one because it got up under it so again that's uh that's something that i'm looking forward to get out and running and and not having to worry about actually so uh, that'd be a nice uh nice hold over until the t-bones come in but all right we're gonna set this off to the side and get going <laughs> 